In this video, we'll be talking about multiple sclerosis. This is a high yield video for USMLE step one. Multiple sclerosis simply means multiple scar and all this scar happens throughout the spinal cord and the central nervous system. So there are many lesions that accumulate over time. So MS results from progressive demyelination of the myelin sheath in the neurons of the central nervous system. So the question is why there is a demyelination? Because the immune system start reacting against these myelin sheath which ultimately results in demyelination. There are autoantibodies which recognize many proteins which are present in the myelin sheath and they react against it thereby destroying this myelination. In this video, we'll be talking about broadly four topics, but the focus would be on pathology. So first we'll be talking about the clinical presentation. Second, we'll be talking about the pathophysiology of the multiple sclerosis. Third, we'll be talking about diagnosis and ultimately we'll talk about treatment and management. So let's talk about the clinical symptoms of multiple sclerosis. So this particular disease does not affect the peripheral nervous system. So the key nerves that are affected are the optic and the oculomotor nerves. Also the spinal nerve tract can be affected very much. The symptoms of multiple sclerosis is quite variable. All the symptoms doesn't occur in all the patients. So there are vision problems which are very common. About 40% patients show that this kind of problem. There are numb, numbness, tingling, walking difficulty, which are also very common in these multiple sclerosis, sclerosis patients. There could be additionally dizziness, weakness, fatigue, cognitive dysfunction, but all these things appear in a variable percentage in different type of patients based on their ethnicity and the geographical location they belong to. But there are some common criteria to classify multiple sclerosis. This includes dysarthria, that means difficulty and unclear speech. Scar and this happens due to the scars in the brainstem. There could be nystagmus, that means involuntary and rapid eye movement. And there are also lesion in the optic and oculomotor nerve. So there are problems, there could be blurred vision. There could be dull vision as well. And also there is intention tremor, which arise due to lesion in the motor pathway. All these three symptoms together is known as the Charcot's triad. Multiple sclerosis patholo pathology is characterized by confluent demyelinated areas throughout the central nervous system. This is how a coronal section of a healthy brain look like. And this is how our MS brain look like. Already you can see there are many uh, lesions that can present that can be present in the cortical region. Cortical demyelination is pretty common. Alongside there, there could be white matter demyelination as well. And this de demyelination, where the myelin sheath is damaged, the conduction velocity of the neuron is affected because myelin sheath works like an insulator for any neuron. These kind of lesions can be detected using magnetic resonance imaging. This is a reference where you can see there are multiple lesions marked by these yellow arrows. Now let's talk about the risk factors. There could be genetic and environmental risk factors. Let's talk about the environmental risk factors first. It turns out that women are more susceptible compared to men when it comes to MS. But why? There could be immunological differences, there could be body fat and genetical differences, there could be also hormone related differences which might account to these kind of changes. And also geography is a big deal because places where sunlight is limiting, for example in the northern part of America and Russia, the risk of, my, uh, the risk of multiple sclerosis is very high. So vitamin D is somehow correlated with the risk of multiple sclerosis and it has been now shown in many studies. So just to summarize, it is more common in females than males and it is more common in areas which has a low sunlight incidence. So here comes the genetic factors. There are more than 200 risk genes variants 
associated with multiple sclerosis are diagnosed. Most of these variants encode molecules which are involved in the immune system or modulation of the immune system. This includes HLA genes present on chromosome 6, especially including HLA DRB1 and this polymorphism is associated with multiple sclerosis. Also polymorphism associated with IL-2 and IL-7 receptors are associated with multiple sclerosis. And this particular review shows a bunch of risk factors including genetic and environmental risk factors associated with multiple sclerosis. One of the important factors to note that there could be viruses which are as which whose infection can be associated with multiple sclerosis. For example, Epstein-Barr virus infection is highly associated with multiple sclerosis, which is found by recent studies. Also, as we have talked about, that low level of vitamin D has a strong correlation with the hazard of relapse in multiple sclerosis. Now, when it comes to classification of multiple sclerosis, there are different types, such as relapsing remitting or RRMS. There could be secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, primary progressive and progressive relapsing multiple sclerosis. In relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis, which is also the most common type, bouts of autoimmune attack happens in span of years or months. In secondary progressive multiple sclerosis, there is a steady progression of the disability. In case of primary progressive, there is a constant attack of, on the myelin sheath which lead to a steady progression of the disease and this is the most dangerous part. And in case of progressive relapsing, there, there is a constant attack but sometimes the attack even uh, become more intense. So the last two are more severe form of multiple sclerosis. Now let's talk about the immunological basis of multiple sclerosis. So when it comes to T cells, Th17 subtype of T cell and Th1 cells are highly associated with multiple sclerosis. These are autoreactive T cells, but why they are generated? Because in normal cases, there are central tolerance and peripheral tolerance mechanism which can prevent the generation of any autoreactive T cells. But how come in multiple sclerosis they are generated? So obviously there is a failure in, these autoreact uh, in preventing these autoreactive T cells. Anyway, these autoreactive T cells eventually cross the blood brain barrier and enter the brain and they can do many things inside the brain including secreting inflammatory cytokine which would ultimately increase the brain inflammation. So question is how autoreactive T cells are generated. Obviously the central tolerance mechanism, the peripheral tolerance mechanism might break down and that is why these autoreactive T cells are generated. It's also possible T regulatory cells which prevent in inflammation, they also break down. That's why there is nobody to supp suppress the inflammatory cell types. Ultimately, the outcome is increased production of Th17 and Th1 cells which in innervate the brain eventually. And these cells can cause several problems inside the brain. However, there are now new research which shows that IL-17 secreting Th17 cells are highly associated with multiple sclerosis patient brain. Now let's talk about the overall summary of the immunological context in multiple sclerosis. Immune cells generally infiltrate from the periphery to the brain. Especially there are activation of circulating CSF lymphocytes which are very predominant in case of multiple sclerosis. Also the CNS is innervated by microglia and astrocytes. Also the state of these microglia and astrocytes becomes more reactive. So overall these immunological factors make it more worse in case of multiple sclerosis. CNS derived soluble antigens are carried in the CSF across the uh, uh, nasal mucosa and ultimately drains into the lymph node. So obviously the lymph node becomes swollen sometimes in the multiple sclerosis. All these information are provided in these reviews whose link is provided in the description. Anyway, there are specific proteins on the myelin sheath known as myelin basic protein or PLP or MOG. All these proteins are not supposed to be detected by the T helper cells because they are self proteins. But it turns out in MS brain, all these proteins are detected and that creates a problem. 
then these particular autoreactive T cells start secreting and differentiating into Th1 and Th17 cells which secrete further inflammatory cytokines like interleukin 1, 6, TGF, beta etc. which overall increase the inflammation in the entire brain and the nervous system. Now, however, the importance of Th1 subtype versus Th17 subtype in context of multiple sclerosis is unknown and it's still subject to debate. But people strongly believe that there is a failure of the regulatory T cells to suppress these autoreactive T cells and that is why the immune system goes haywire in case of multiple sclerosis. Now there are many clinically relevant biomarkers which are discovered for multiple sclerosis. All of these are basically CSF derived biomarkers. So after lumbar puncture followed by proteomic studies found that myelin basic protein, IgM, oligoclonal bands, uh, neural cell addition molecules or NCAMs, osteopontin, then CXCL13, all of these proteins can serve as important biomarker for multiple sclerosis. All these biomarkers can also be monitored in early stage of the disease uh, progression. So the prognosis might be better if we consider these um, biomarkers for diagnosis. Other than biomarkers, there are classical clinical MRIs which are really important and confirmatory for these kind of uh, multiple sclerosis diagnosis. One can clearly understand there would be multiple lesions in the brain as seen here marked by the yellow circles. There is no treatment for available for multiple sclerosis. There is no cure for multiple sclerosis. However, all the uh, symptoms such as physical weakness, numbness, these can be treated with uh, supportive medication physiotherapy can make things better and i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe please share my channel link with your friends and let me know in the comments how do you like my videos you can support our channel using super thanks see you in next video